Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. This is Elizabeth Holmes, once the youngest female self-made billionaire. In this never-before-aired deposition, she sits across from 12 attorneys under investigation for an alleged years-long fraud. 20 years in prison, it's a stunning fall from grace for the woman who was once poised to change the world. This is a revolutionary company that threatens to change health care. If she had made this work, she would have been the next Steve Jobs. We've made it possible to eliminate the tubes and tubes of blood. Her technology promised to run hundreds of tests from a tiny finger prick, a promise she would never fulfill. This is not fake it to you make it. This thing is a product that didn't work. Did Ms. Holmes know that Theranos could not do all those tests? She, yeah, she knew. It's a story of greed, and it's a story of incredible deception. It all started here at Stanford University, the birthplace of so many tech icons. In Silicon Valley, one of the things that people brag about is that they drop out of college. Steve Jobs dropped out of college, Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of college, Bill Gates dropped out of college. After less than two years here, Elizabeth dropped out too. It was at a point where another few classes in chemical engineering it was not necessary for what I wanted to do. In 2003, she launched her company, which she would come to name Theranos. It's about keeping that conviction in yourself. Elizabeth wanted nothing less than to be the apple of healthcare. Insiders say she was obsessed with Steve Jobs and that she wanted to mimic him at every turn, from those signature black turtlenecks to recruiting his former head of software, Avi Tavanian. This seems like a really bright young lady who is very driven, has a really interesting idea. But he quickly started seeing red flags. She'd prick her finger, and then she would put blood on something, and then she'd put it in the machine, and then sometimes she would say, this part doesn't work anymore, which was a little bit odd. But some of that you expect, again, from a startup that has a product that's not done, right? But the problem was it never got any better. Avi quit after a year but Elizabeth kept going, eventually getting an enormous loan from a former software executive named Sonny Belwani. I think it was about $20 million. But Sonny, a flashy entrepreneur who drove a Porsche 911 and a black Lamborghini, wasn't just offering a lifeline. He was also joining Theranos as COO. Did he have any qualifications in the lab testing business? He did not. Or in pathology or anything like that? Not to my knowledge. He seemed an odd choice to employees, but he became Elizabeth's number two. And together, they went after their biggest collaboration yet, with Walgreens, as seen here in this Theranos tweet. Walgreens at that point had more than 8,000 stores in the US. So you can imagine that uh, the Theranos blood test would have been uh, available at almost every street corner. So they cut a $140 million deal. On the heels of that news, she assembled an all-star board of government heavyweights. The piece that really vaulted her to fame and stardom was the cover story in Fortune magazine. The article states that Theranos offers more than 200 blood tests without a syringe. But precisely how Theranos accomplishes all these amazing feats is a trade secret. You saw her almost once a week either gracing a magazine cover or attending a tech conference or a healthcare conference or going on TV. Elizabeth Holmes from Theranos. Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes. Thank you yeah, for having me. I am so incredibly humbled. We did this. You founded this company 12 years ago, right? Yeah. Tell them how old you were. I was 19. By 2014, Theranos is valued at nearly $10 billion. The founders of Walmart invest $150 million, media mogul Rupert Murdoch $125 million, and the DeVos family, including now Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, another $100 million. But for all the hype on the outside, on the inside, things weren't going as planned. Employees like Erica Chung were dealing with a product that still wasn't working. At what point do you start to think something isn't right here? 
I think the transition happened is when I started processing patient samples. So you basically start out with a base test. Yep. And it kept failing. I kept running it over and over and over. And how it was handled it totally blew me away. They took out data points. So you're you're saying essentially that you were cherry picking exactly. the information. Right. But the thing is, is we were still processing patients. Patients like Sherry Ackert. This is the Walgreens where I had the infamous blood draw. As a breast cancer survivor, Sherry needed to get tested regularly. But things took a terrifying turn when she got her results. I saw that the estradiol amount was over 300. I called my oncologist's office and the nurse called me back and she said, I am so sorry, that's not good. There could be a tumor growing somewhere. I will never forget that day. The doctor told Sherry to go in for more tests, but this time recommended a non-Theranos lab. It was about a week later, I got the call from my doctor and he said, congratulations, your estrogen is basically non-existent. The Theranos tests had been off by hundreds of points. <laughs> No one from Theranos ever called me to apologize. No one. Not okay. So many inside the walls of Theranos say they were too scared to speak up. But there was one unlikely whistleblower willing to take the risk, a research engineer named Tyler Schultz. He also happened to be the grandson of former Secretary of State George Schultz, a board member at Theranos. You also said that Ms. Holmes was manipulative. What did you mean by that? She's really good at telling you what you need to hear to keep going. She definitely did that a lot with my grandfather. She would just like feed him things that were just completely factually not true. People can come in and do full service laboratory testing with a stick from a finger, as opposed to having the tubes and tubes taken from your arm. Can you uh, recall any of the factually not true things that Ms. Holmes told you? The big ones are being able to run hundreds of blood tests from a single drop of blood. My grandfather would go get a Theranos test done and he would have a needle in his arm. You know, it's like, well, I thought this was a single drop of blood and there'd be some, you know, excuse about why they needed to take a venous draw for him, but, you know, for everybody else, it's a finger prick, and he continued to buy into that. They weren't even running most of the tests on the Theranos devices. While I was working there, we only ran seven tests on the Theranos devices. And most of the tests were being run on third-party machines. Did Ms. Holmes know at the time that Theranos could not do all those tests? She, yeah, she knew. Of the few tests they were running on Theranos devices, Tyler says the results were often not accurate. I think at the end of the day, everyone was concerned that we weren't giving patients the right results. Tyler eventually decided he would raise his issues directly with the CEO herself. Elizabeth responded by email later that evening. She writes, Tyler, these are very, very serious comments and allegations you're making. And then she says that she's going to have to go have the teams go through this line by line. So it will take some time before I get back to you on this. But rather than a follow up from Elizabeth, he received this email from Sonny Balwani. That reckless comment based on absolute ignorance is so insulting to me that had any other person made these statements, we would have held them accountable in the strongest way. The only reason I have taken so much time away from work to address this personally is because you are Mr. Schultz's grandson. The only email on this topic I want to see from you going forward is an apology. Instead, Tyler gave his two weeks notice. He says he went to go meet with his grandfather at his home later that day. Tyler tried to make him realize that this was a fraud and his grandfather had sided with Elizabeth Holmes and didn't believe him. He said, they're trying to convince me that you're stupid, but they can't do that. They can, however, convince me that you're wrong. And in this case, I do believe you're wrong. And my grandfather said that the Theranos devices were currently being used in medevac helicopters. He said that? He said that. Did he tell you who had told him that? 
he didn't say who told him that, but I have a really good guess. <laughs> he also said they were being used in operating rooms. I remember saying that that couldn't possibly be true because the devices were barely working within the walls of Theranos. Having made no progress with his grandfather, Tyler eventually took his concerns to Wall Street Journal investigative reporter John Carreyrou. Carreyrou authored the first of many explosive articles in the Wall Street Journal that stated, among other claims, that the company isn't using its technology for all the tests it offers, but instead was using traditional machines bought from companies like Siemens to run the majority of its tests. Following the article, a defiant Elizabeth appeared on Mad Money with Jim Cramer. This is what happens when you work to change things. And first they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. Elizabeth continued to deny, deny, deny. She deployed in emergency rooms, hospitals, and provider offices. No. Was a Theranos manufacturer device ever deployed? Uh, in the battlefield? No. Was it ever deployed in a medevac helicopter? No. She was challenged sentence by sentence on what she told Fortune in that star-making cover story. Is the statement uh, that Theranos currently offers more than 200 and is ramping up to offer more than 1,000 of the most commonly ordered blood diagnostic tests, all without the need for a syringe, was that statement correct? I'm reading it now, I don't think it is. And there was another significant detail that she had been less than forthcoming about. Were you and Sunny Balwani ever engaged in a romantic relationship? Yes. When? For a long period of time. Would you say for the majority of that time, were you living with Ms. Holmes? Yes. Did you ever tell investors that you had had a romantic relationship? No. Uh, personally, me talking to investors one-on-one, -on -one, telling them uh, my relationship? No, I didn't. It was concealed from the board it was concealed from the press. Uh, it was concealed from investors. You think it was intentional that they hit it? Oh, it was absolutely intentional. As revelations about Theranos started to unfold and the divide between Elizabeth's grandiose vision versus reality became clear. Now to the stunning fall of a former CEO. The SEC had enough to bring charges against her. And soon, so did the Department of Justice. Elizabeth Holmes and another former executive await a criminal trial. They face up to 20 years in prison. Elizabeth Holmes is stepping down as the chief executive officer. Holmes pleaded not guilty. By September 2018, the company was officially out of business. How big of a deal is this? I think it's the, probably the, the most interesting fraud case I've dealt with. Bernie Madoff would be second. And you think they're similar people? I think they're very similar people. Smart, charming, bullies. Elizabeth and her counsel did not respond to our repeated requests for comment. She denies any wrongdoing. But Sonny Balwani's attorney, Jeff Coopersmith, agreed to join us for his first in-depth on-camera interview. If you were going to give him a grade on the job he did at Theranos, what would that grade be? I would give him an A-plus for dedication and effort. But obviously, when we look at this after the fact, and there's been a business failure, and, you know, Mr. Ball is very sorry about that, but that's not fraud. It seems like a central component of your case is that Theranos was on the right track, and if they had enough time, they would have gotten it 100% right. I think eventually the company would have been a, a great success if it had been allowed to run. When it comes to our health, people want to know it's 100% accurate day one. They want to know that what's inside of a Walgreens or at their doctor's office can actually do what it says it will do. You know, Rebecca, of course that's true. I think, though, the unfortunate thing is that in our system of health care, there's mistakes that are made every day. There's no perfect answer. A lot of people will say, fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it doesn't work in health care because you're talking about people's health. So many people wind up in jail for such little things. This is not a little thing. And it's also, not only did they fool the investors, they fooled the media, they fooled patients, they fooled doctors. But as Elizabeth herself once declared at a Forbes conference, she is not a woman who will go down without a fight. When you have that passion, 
you will get back up when you get knocked down. And you will get knocked down over and over and over and over again, and you win by getting back up. And I would start this company over 10,000 times if I had to.